When you can start to see the vision of a woman's soul appearing and that she can actually believe that she can change, which then transfers to her believing for a better life for her child, that's my absolute favorite part of, of the work that we do. Celebrating our 30th anniversary this year, Hannah's House started as a home for young women to have their babies and have them in a healthy, stable environment. And it was a place where they could come, be safe, have the baby, and then go back into where they came from. We now look at it and we now have a program. And so women can come to our program and spend up to two to three years. And because transformation is a process, it's a life process, it doesn't happen overnight. We really focus on what the women have been through and what they need to go through to choose a different pattern for their life. And so we really offer and I, I know we offered hope in the past, but we offer hope now in the future, a hope of a life that, that they didn't believe that they could have. But we have a philosophy, and that is to show grace, not shame. I had a really rough upbringing. I ended up getting married to my high school sweetheart. <laughs> Uh, being in a you know toxic abusive relationship, uh, some of the life decisions I was making at the time, I could have really ended up in some really bad situations. Growing up, my mom was an alcoholic addict, and the only time she would go into rehab is when then she went to jail, and then the courts made her go to rehab, and then she was back at it. So I never knew what recovery was, you know. We had two kids from our marriage. We were married for three years. He got into alcohol really bad, and things turned pretty abusive. Growing up, I always had to try to find my own way. I was so confused, so lost, so lost in life. I grew up without a dad. It was my dead set goal. I will make sure my daughters grow up with their mom and dad. What I'm doing, okay, I'm getting back with him. Oh, I'm just trying to make our family work. I'm trying to make this marriage work before we go through divorce. And all in the meantime, I didn't realize he would never change and I was only hurting myself and my two daughters. The relationship I was in at the time became, um, had been toxic, but became even more toxic. And the father of the baby uh, had let me know that he no longer wanted to be in a relationship. So his desire was not to be a father, uh, not to be co-parenting and I did find myself uh, contacting an abortion clinic. Uh, it was not something that I was proud of, but it was definitely out of fear. I found myself then needing to leave the relationship and not really knowing where to go, and ended up at a homeless shelter for a little bit of time, and then couch surfing on some friends' couches when available. I'm in recovery, and um, I was on Suboxone. I never dabbled in the hardcore stuff, but the gateway, enough to try to like numb the pain or try to get through the days. You know, when you women find themselves in a position, um, maybe that they didn't entirely plan um, to be in, especially facing an unplanned pregnancy or even a planned pregnancy, but things aren't going the way that they had hoped, uh, facing homelessness um, and being scared, it's, you're in a very vulnerable state. My family gave up all hope on me. And they told me that, and that was the worst thing I could ever hear. I was desperate. I needed a place to live. I was looking for hope. I was looking for direction. I was looking for answers to life. <laughs> I decided to run because that's what I do. I run whenever things get hard. I run. Sometimes wonder where I would be. Had I not gone to Hannah's house, um, it's kind of scary to think about. I, I worry that I maybe would not have remained pregnant. I worry that I uh, maybe would have not even survived. I wanted to end my life. I have always asked myself, you know, at this moment in time, why did God put me in this place, put me in this position? I'm absolutely a rule follower, 
but I'm also, I also understand the gray that lives in life. We all make mistakes, right? And so if people made a mistake and we chastised them or shamed them for that, then where would they be? I would not be where I am if it wasn't for Hannah's house. So looking back, things I appreciate now, things I didn't appreciate then, I was only 19 at the time, uh, so it was 24 years ago. A lot has changed, but I can see looking back that, for one, it was definitely a godsend, it was a blessing. I was faced with the you know, fork in the road, is either you go back to what you know with no resources and old behaviors and old patterns and old people, or you do something new, something that you're afraid to do. And I did, I took the leap of faith and I, and I went to Hannah's house and it was the best thing that I ever did. Why did Susan and Judy pick me and never gave up on me? Because I promise you, I've gotten in a lot of trouble there and they have never given up on me. And Kaylee, you know, I mean, she's right in the heart of it. That's why, I mean, the emotion is so strong. It's, and, and she, I'm sure she shared with you, she's made mistake after mistake. And, you know, if we were to say, well, too bad, you're three, you're out, you know, where would she go? What would she do? And so we say, yes, you do have to improve and you do have to begin to make better choices. But we say, okay, you don't want to do that. So what can we do? How can we help you? How can we help you build skills and habits so you won't make those choices? That is my favorite part about Hannah's House. We come together, we make an agreement, we come to a solution together. And those women, they have never given up on me. When everybody else has, they have never known. Sometimes it's life. They just have to go through life and they have to experience things. And they have, but they, when you can come back to a loving environment where people are accepting you, the next time she makes a mistake, she doesn't try to hide it. She says, I can go to them. I can trust them that they're going to understand that, yeah, I messed up, but I'm going to come in a humble way and they're going to they're going to help me through it. And that's, that's what you're experiencing with Kaylee. God never gave up on me. <laughs> and Hannah's house hasn't gave up on me. So I'm trucking along and I'm doing great. And I <laughs> it's amazing to see the, the light go off, you know, in someone's brain and them to say, I can do this. I can absolutely do this. And they can go from a, a place of hopelessness to a real place of hope. And you have to want it. And I'm telling you, I want it, and I'm going for it. I'm certified as an EMT, and my end goal is a paramedic. Uh, from a community perspective, working in uh, the nursing uh, career that I've uh, worked in now for almost eight years and working with women, uh, really longer than that, I've encountered these women myself and being able to say I've been there. I'm optimistic about life. I mean, yes, of course, we have so many setbacks in life, but it's about getting up and brushing yourself off and, and giving it one more shot. Six years today, six years and six months actually. So I have my own cleaning business. I'm going back to school and to be able to provide for my children, that's the most gratifying feeling. We're so passionate about it all these years. Without the Killalay family, there, there would not be a Hannah's house. To leave a legacy of that magnitude is so special and I, I aspire to that. I want that for myself um, to, to follow in the footsteps of Bill Killalay and Diane Killalay. Bill didn't have a time where he asked you for something. He kind of told you that if you don't get involved in this, you're missing out because this is a good mission. This is, this is a mission worth funding. I, I didn't know Bill for very long, but you can see Tim now rising to Bill's legacy level. It's very inspiring and the, the entire family is, is hugely supportive and they really, you know, they honor what dad started and they want to they want to build on to that. First and foremost, I'd just like to thank you for 30 years of support. My hope is that you see the difference that you make in everyone's life that's associated to Hannah's house. Your 
contributions and your support of Hannah's House makes the difference from today and into the future. And so I'm very fortunate that I've had an opportunity to see how Hannah's House has grown and evolved over the years. I'm thankful that I can be a small part of the success of Hannah's House. So I just wanna to say to everyone that's a part of Hannah's House, I can't thank you enough for being a part of my life when I needed somebody the most and I didn't feel like I had anybody. I felt like everyone that I had learned to love and trust had turned their back on me and Hannah's House did not do that for me. So I deeply appreciate that and just wanna say thank you. Hannah's House, you know, they let me go through that transition. They helped me with my daughter. They helped me, you know, they helped me to heal from that and held me accountable and said, it's time to get over it and get through it. Let's do what we have to, let's. And then it was like from that moment on, I changed completely. I, I dedicated my life to change and here I am. If you want to help women, and if you want to help a woman who has had a history of disadvantages, you can pick and choose uh, trauma, abuse, addiction, a poor, unhealthy upbringing, then our work is for you. Our work, you know, you can know that your funding helps women in their growth, helps women transform their life, really changing the trajectory of a family tree that's what we do at Hannah's House. Hannah's House has changed my life so much.